Hi guys, welcome back to We Should Talk, a pop culture interview series from In The Know. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, and today on the podcast, we have Alyssa Amoroso, aka Publicity. She is the host of Tea With Publicity, and you, I'm sure, have seen her TikTok content. She has a great, infectious personality. She started her career as an entertainment publicist, so she knows a lot about what she's talking about when she when she spills the tea on kind of everything. She runs the gamut from really lifestyle content to celebrity content, um, and she's super great. And this week, she is launching a new product, which is also called Tea with Publicity, but it is not the podcast. It is a literal tea brand. She is launching this really chic, sleek uh, brand of black tea. It, black tea is the first tea she's going to release, hopefully more flavors down the road. But um, she showed me the packaging during this interview, and it is very sleek. It's basically like a coffee table book that holds all the tea. So after you're done with it, you can display it somewhere. Um, very smart. Uh, and again, she has that background that informs what she's doing now, which is really cool. And it was really fun to hear about not just her path and some great stories from her time as an entertainment publisher, Publicist, but also just sort of the thought process behind all the different, all the different things that she does. Um, and she was super open, super, super genuine with all that she was talking about. And while I was doing research for this interview, I didn't, I, I had seen sort of hints that her podcast potentially used to be at Barstool, but wasn't anymore. And I just asked her about that at the very end. Um, and she was very open about it. She talked all about sort of being let go by the company and how she had originally cold pitched Dave, Dave Portner during the pandemic. Um, she shared a lot of details about that, um, which is really interesting to hear. And she seems to be in a very good, good place about that whole situation. So yeah, keep listening for my interview with Alyssa Amoroso. You can check out Tea with Publicity on her, her social pages. And please rate, review, and subscribe to We Should Talk on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so we are here with Alyssa Amoroso, aka Publicity. She is the host of Tea with Publicity. Alyssa, thanks for being here. We're talking on the verge of a really exciting launch for you. I know. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me. I feel like my career, my life, like the culmination of everything <laughs> has like led to this moment because this brand that I'm launching just like really deeply reflects everything that has been going on in my career. So I'm really excited for it. It's going to be That's exciting. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So before we get to, to the product and we'll talk yeah. about it and sort of how, but I, I do, I did want to sort of like better understand like the path that has led you to where you are now, because I, I, I understand that you, you once were an entertainment publicist, you kind of done different things as a content creator over the past several years. So talk me through like the start of your career, like what were you doing and, and what did you like or not like about it? Yeah, that's what's so crazy because I feel like I'm in a really unique position where I've seen so many like sides of the industry, just not even by choice or chance. Like it just kind of happens that right. way. I always was like really attracted to pop culture. And I don't even just mean like celebrities. I just mean like popular culture as a whole, like whether it's trends or home decor or what celebrities are wearing or what TV shows are on, just like everything. So I think it kind of started really early. I always like attribute it to my mom because she used to buy the National Enquirer. Like remember when that was the only <laughs> Of course. Oh my God. Every, every grocery aisle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It was like the only trash mag and like she would have it like and I would always read it as a kid, even though I probably wasn't supposed to be. So I feel <laughs> like I always just like kind of grew up like staying up to date on things and like sneaking, like watching the real world in my bedroom and like really into reality TV. Like you when had a TV started. in your bedroom. Yeah, but I wasn't supposed to be watching the real world. Like I, remember, I, <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying I'm jealous you had a TV in your bedroom to begin with. It was like one of those little box ones. Love and it. I would sit with my hand on the power button because like if my parents if I heard them coming I would like turn it off quickly <laughs> <laughs> we've all been there <laughs> yeah so it's been forever so like I think what happened was I always had a blog like before I even knew blogging was a thing or you can make money I just had one like I don't mm. even know what they were or what I was doing on them I was like young and I would just like write advice as if like I had advice to give I'm like 12 I'm like lived a life <laughs> yeah I'm like this is what you wear to school. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I always did it. And then professionally, I started um, in college realizing that initially I interned a lot in fashion and I was mm -hmm. like, eh, I don't know if that's for me. Like, I love fashion, but I realized there's people that loved it more. Like I was in my magazine, like my magazine internships and 
people knew every brand and like the correct French pronunciation. And I was like, right. And you were just more like, I like to like put an outfit together, but yeah, I, I'm not, you don't, you're not like nerd out on, on like the fashion industry. Yes. I was like, right. I'm not willing to like make no money. Which and... is a good, it's also a good realization to have, honestly. Yeah, exactly. I just was like, I love it, but you love it more. And right. like, there's something else that I love more. And that was more of the, um, I thought it was initially celebrity styling. And then I realized rather quickly it was, like celebrity entertainment, pop culture. So that's where I, when I started interning in PR and from there, I just started like hardcore pursuing, like working in publicity, ironically, <laughs> and, um, graduated college, got a job right away in entertainment PR. I worked hospitality. I worked with a lot of talent, like rappers and athletes. And I did a lot of high-end events and I was like really immersed in it. And during that time, all of my blogs that I had done for years kind of fell to the wayside. Um, and it wasn't until I started really noticing like that we were changing our strategy as publicists. We were stop, we were starting to pitch influencers versus just traditional media. Hmm. And I was like, wait, I could do that. Like right. you can be on I've the other side that. of that. On the other side of that pitching. Pro- yeah, totally. Yeah. I was like, wait, we're paying people to like talk about these brands. Like I used to do that for free. Hmm. So I kind of just had this thing click in me. I feel like I felt like I needed a hobby, if I'm being honest, um, outside of work. Like I was just like working and going to bed. And so I was like, you know what? I kind of need a hobby. So mm-hmm. I started blogging. And then like the the thing is like everything's just trickled from there because I do like staying up to date with things. I've just gotten on every new trend. Like I launched a podcast in 2018. I started selling merch in 2018. Like I was always like a little bit ahead of the curve considering I'm not like Gen Z, I'm millennial, like early adapter on TikTok even, even Mm. though I was kind of older at that point. And I just like always kept- You had the instinct. You had the instinct though to, to kind of go, to be in those spaces maybe before the masses were. And the desire, I think, too. Like, I'm like, oh, something's new. I got to be a part of it. Mm. And so, yeah, so you're not somebody who, I think a lot of people of our generation, their initial instinct is is to sort of like resist it and be like, oh my God, another thing. Oh my God, whatever. But you have sort of the opposite reaction to something like that, where it's like, oh no, I want to be in on the ground floor. Okay. I always say this to my friends. I'm like, I think it's so uncool (laughs) to age yourself. Like, I- I really find it so irritating. Like even my peers, my friends, people will be like, oh, like Gen Z says that the side part's out. And I'm like, get with it, guys. Like, Right, totally. I'm or like I, I, one thing I hate that people say is like, they'll be like, oh, like listening to Olivia Rodrigo makes me feel so old. And I'm like, well, like what what makes her different from any other? Like, I don't understand that. Like, it's like, I love I listening to her. I'm a 30 year old man. And like, it does not make me feel old at all. Like I find not find agree. your way, find your way into all of it. You know, I could not agree more. I'm like, it's not cool to be outdated in my opinion. Like for me, I'm like, I want to be 90 and being like, <laughs> what's the new app that's out? Like, right. I feel like it's such a good way to stay. First of all, like up to date on world events and pop culture and what's going on. And like, I just, I just always think I will be this way because I like to be in the know. Like I have a natural curiosity for being in the know and I get FOMO. Like when, when it was 2020 and I'm like 29 at the time and like Dixie D'Amelio and Noah Beck and Charlie are blowing up. I still knew what was going on because I had to be in the know. Yeah, totally. You you just (laughs) have, you have that, 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 I don't know what it's a gene. It's like something, it's just something intrinsic, I think. And it's, (laughs) you know, and some people don't have that and that's fine, but I agree. It's that that is a very frustrating thing that I think a lot of people in our generation do. You know, I'm like, why are you aging yourself? Like, you're making it's so it unnecessary, worse right? Exactly. And also, I think it's it's proven. Like, if you if if you spend any time on TikTok, it's like it's not about like your age or like what generation you're from. It just it, it is about like what you're saying, what your content is, and like what you know, mm-hmm. and, and your ability to la- latch on to some of those trends. But like, you see people of all ages blowing up and doing well on that platform. You know what I mean? Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like the thing for me is always just like rolling with the times and like yeah. trying new things. And like, that's just been such a big thing in my career. And it started as a blog and Instagram. It then went to a blog, Instagram and podcast. Then I dropped the blog added in merch and TikTok and YouTube. 
And now I am adding in this new tea brand. Um, so it's just always like reinventing the wheel. There's, it's sort of, but there's sort of like a rotating, like kind of assemblage of things, which is yes. which is so cool. Um, I before we move on, I do just because I, I'm someone who also is like very pop culture obsessed. Yeah. When you were an entertainment publicist, like you said, you were working with rappers and other like kind of stars of that nature. What were you doing with them? And like, can you share like one fun story from that time or like one fun interaction that you had? Because I think it's a, I think there, there's, I think, I honestly think that one thing that TikTok has really shown me is that there is like a lot of interest in sort of the behind the scenes of like the celebrity entertainment PR yeah. of it all. Yeah. So what's something that you can share from that, from that time? I know it's crazy. I always joke that I will write a book one day. Um, I've started it actually, but I've put it on hold since, but like a devil wears Prada type book oh, where it's be great. behind the scenes of like what it's like to actually be a publicist because I feel like on paper or like on Instagram, it looked so glamorous. People would be like, oh my God, you're at the launch of this new event. And I'm like, yeah, but mm -hmm. I'm working the door and it's 30 degrees outside. <laughs> right. And my boss is verbally abusing me. <laughs> oh my like, God. Shit. That's what it was so, like when you were there, when you're doing it. Oh my God. I've had the craziest stories, but I have some, so my, I did a lot of events and then with the events came the celebrity clientele. Right. So my first job, um, it was the year when the Super Bowl was in New York. So that was really cool because I, I worked the door at like a Playboy Super oh, Bowl. Fine. So that. I was literally in charge of like checking in the celebrities as they walked in. And so a lot of my um, interaction with celebrities would be on that level, right, like totally. walking them in, introducing them. It's wrangling still surreal. Them. It's crazy. I think actually my first celebrity event ever was a Brad Pitt event, like my first week of work. And I'm like, wow. what? I'm meeting Brad Pitt. Like, that's crazy. And it's funny because I feel like the, even just those quick interactions are probably enough to like keep you in it for a certain amount of time before you realize yes. that like you maybe aren't, aren't actually enjoying it. You know what I mean? That's sort of like the, the, the quick perk. Then it's like, mm -hmm. okay, well actually take a step back. Yeah. I like saw Brad Pitt in the same room, but like, huh? Yeah. And it's like ego because you want to be able to like tell people like, yeah, I work with celebrities. Right. And like leaving that, it's kind of like when I left celebrity PR to go to enter, uh, to go to consumer PR, it kind of was an ego death in the sense, like I went from working with like Brad Pitt to being like, yeah, I work with baby powder. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, of course. I totally get it. But I think one of my craziest stories, I'm trying to think which one's the crazy, uh, I have a few. Okay. This one's pretty freaking nuts. So my old boss, Tammy, she lived in LA and she was the one that handled like all the celebrity relationships. But when she would come to New York and the clients would come to New York, that's when I would step in and help. Right. So during like fashion week and stuff, she would always pull me in to work with people. Like I remember one time for fashion week, we were doing something with Odell Beckham Jr. from the Giants at the time. And Anna Wintour requested that he sit next to her at fashion week. So like my whole thing was like to walk in with Odell and like, make sure that he like met Anna and sat with her. And like that alone is crazy, oh, you know? Yeah. Oh my God. Like, and so little things like that. And I remember we're at this fashion show and my boss at the time, Tammy looks at me and she's like, Oh, it's like, there's a jet scheme. Like, do you want to go? And I'm like, okay. She's like, yeah, we're going to go with iced tea and cocoa. I'm like, all right. <laughs> She's like, they're my good friends. I'm like, okay. So we like get an Uber to New Jersey to Ice Tea and Coco's house. They the house. pick us up in like a one of those cars that has like the doors that. Oh yeah. Like, that's like open. fling up instead of. Yeah, right. like, like, I couldn't get into the car. I remember being like, <laughs> so I like get like sly into the car. I'm acting cool. They're so down to earth. And we're driving through like the parking lot at the stadium MetLife, I guess at the time it was giant stadium. We're driving through like MetLife and people see iced tea driving the car and Coco in the driver's seat. So everyone's like yelling, like, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and like we drive up, we get escorted in and then we're in like the front row. And the next day it was like all over the press, like pictures of them. And you just see me <laughs> like sitting next to them. And I was getting messages from random people being like, why are you with iced tea and cocoa? Because I'm best friends with them. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, it would just be stuff like that all yeah, the time. Totally. I would just get like roped into these situations and, or just like roped it. Like we, my boss represented DJ Khaled. So like I was, would go to the studio one day with DJ Khaled and all of a sudden like Busta Rhymes walked in and was like, oh, hey, I was recording next door. 
And I'm just like, where am I? Like, right, what is totally. happening? Right, totally. Another just, world. Yeah, it was just always those moments of like, this is crazy. Right, totally. Oh my God, I, I that's amazing. I, I could talk about that for hours. But so flash forward, you have a podcast called Tea with Publicity. Yes. And now you're, which we can talk about, but you are launching a product that, of the same name. So, yes. which is actually a tea brand. So is it, uh-huh. so talk to me about, was that like, were you ever like, just talk me through like, okay, like we should actually just do this, like very like kind of literal take on, mm-hmm. on my podcast name and, and sort of what people want from me. Like talk me through about, about the, that, that thought process. I do a lot with like intuition and gut feeling. And like, obviously for years, I'm like, I should launch a tea, but it never felt right. And like, I always wanted to launch, launch like a product extension of some kind, but I didn't know what that looked like yeah. until it really just like hit me upside the head one day. Like it just happened where I was like, this is the idea. This is what I'm doing. And then I just didn't look back. But I think what's actually funny about the whole tea thing is the fact that I genuinely grew up in a house of non-coffee drinkers. Like my parents did not drink coffee, which is, I feel like in America, like, Very like rare. I guess in Europe too, but it's so weird. Like everyone drinks coffee. It's such a big cultural thing. Whereas like, I never grew up drinking coffee because my parents didn't, my dad drank exclusively tea. So it's funny when I look back at my life, because like tea, not only is like a pop culture phrase that I use, but it also like has this common thread in my life where I genuinely grew up a tea drinker. And to this day, I drink tea all the time. My favorite kind of tea is unsweetened iced tea, just a black yeah. tea with yeah. fresh lemon. So that's what I launched. I decided to launch black tea with notes of lemon because I wanted it to be authentic to like what I genuinely drink every day. Mm-hmm. And um, it just like, it kind of hit me. I don't even know like how I was, I moved to LA after living in New York for a decade. I think I was feeling more inspired than ever. And I was just driving one day and I just started having these like ideas. And I remember being at a stoplight and like writing them down in like a notes section of my phone. And because what I do is like spill the tea and talk about pop culture, I had this idea to create this flavor, binge watch black tea and really create like a pop culture tea where And then I trademarked the slogan, sip it while you spill it, because I'm like, I want to be able to like sip the tea while I'm spilling the tea, like tea drinking. I don't think it has to be so serious. Every tea is marketed as a wellness tea, de bloat, de this, de that. Listen, great. I love, I love all kinds of tea and I'm not saying I won't ever like branch out into those categories, but I think that I was like. I want tea drinking to be cool like coffee is. Like the way like everyone gets their iced coffee and walks around with it. Like let's make tea cool. Yeah, let's- it hasn't really it hasn't really gotten that treatment before. It really hasn't. Yeah, really, yeah nothing comes to cool. mind. Yeah. Yeah, it was like it like let's make it fun. Tea is so good. It has so many better like health benefits. Personally, the reason why I drink tea instead of coffee is because I get um really bad like flare-ups when I drink a lot of coffee. Like I've literally had to get an endoscopy. Like it coffee kills wow. my esophagus. Like it kills my stomach. Tea is like much more gentle. Mm-hmm. So that's genuinely why I drink it. Like I'm not going to lie. I obviously like the flavor of coffee, but I I really have to mainly drink tea for health. So For me, it's just one of those things where I was like, I want to make it more fun. I want to create a tea that has to do with pop culture. And um, the twofold of that was the packaging because I love marketing. And because I was a publicist, I knew that I wanted the packaging to be like really trendy, really touching. And I had this idea to make the packaging look like a coffee table book. So you could display it in your home. And oh, fun. Whole, I have it here. My whole point of doing that was really. Oh my cute. God, it's gorgeous. Thank you. So cute. Very cute. Love Inside. it. Yes. So cool book. Literally so, never seen, never seen tea presented in that way, which is I, tea, I've tea, had, tea never... had a PR problem. You know what I mean? Right? And now... <laughs> so I'm making tea cool again. And that's, yeah. So that's why I was like, I'd never seen this done before. And It was just this like thing that kind of came to me where I was, I love home decor and I have tons of coffee table books out. So I call this a a tea table book because, you know, Oh, I love that. But do it the full, the full 360 rebrand. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like, I want, I feel like packaging is so wasteful. I get so many PR packages where I'm just like, 
getting rid of them or being like, what the heck do I do with this? And I was like, I want my packaging to be able to be displayed. So this is the first, I'm launching with one flavor. The goal is to launch with others. And then each box will be a different color and you could stack them. Like you could do, a, you could do a rainbow, right? Exactly. A whole rainbow. Exactly. So that's really the concept. It's kind of awesome. twofold. It's about just being fun and having fun with tea and not taking it too seriously, drinking it with friends, mixing it into a cocktail, whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. but just like, Sip it while you spill it. Have fun. It's, it's, per curious. it's perfect. When you, when you, I mean, you said you've done merch before, but when you're launching like an actual product like this, mm -hmm. what kind of like, I don't know. Cause I feel like if I was, if I was ever going to do something like that, I, I would just be nervous. Like about like, how, like, are people going to buy it? Like, you know what I mean? So what, what kind of like things do you do in advance? Like make sure like, this is something that like your audience is interested in, like that people want, want from you. Like, have you done, have you asked your followers for any like direct feedback on this or like, mm -hmm. How have you kind of gone about that, that aspect of the whole process? Yeah. So I feel like I'm really, I'm kind of like confident when it comes to, it's so weird when it comes to business, I'm mm -hmm. like, this is the idea. And I know this will work. And I think that's why I always wanted to be my own boss because like, let's say I worked for a team and I put this idea forward and it got shut down. I'd be rolling my eyes. Like you totally. guys are what you're talking about. Whereas, I mean, you, you know, you know, you know, when it's you like, work for yourself, you're like, no, this is a great idea. And I'm going to do it. Let's and, do it. And let, me find, let me find the people that will help me make it happen. Exactly. So I think in my head, I personally feel like this is something I've never seen before. And I think is like fantastic that I'm like, people can't not think it's great. You know what I mean? Because I'm so confident in it. And I think that's the thing. I never wanted to launch a business that wasn't something I felt like yeah. I would buy as a consumer. Like if I saw the aesthetic Instagram girlies posting this, I'd fall for that ad in a second. Mm -hmm. and totally. Like, that's the thing. I'm like, I'm the consumer. I'm the target. So like, if I'm into this, like I assume other people are too. I think my followers in terms of them, like knowing or giving input, they're guessing what it is. Oh. Many of them have guessed tea. Um, I think they're going to be shocked by the packaging mm -hmm. because that's what's really like sets it apart, I believe. Um, a lot of them probably think it's like a canned beverage or I, I just, I don't think they expect the whole like box element of it and the look of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that people are really excited because they've been following me and I think they know I, they, a lot of my followers follow me because of my business background, which is a little bit different than some influencers. They know that I, I did the marketing, I did the creation. I wrote all of the copy I've literally done every single thing myself, like every single thing down. Like I didn't hire a team to come up with the creative. Oh, wow. like I did it all because I have the background. Mm -hmm. So I think my followers know that. So they're excited to see something that like I've genuinely. Right. Covered. Whereas like another influencer might, it, it might just be them putting their name on something and it's like, okay, well, like. Mm -hmm. why are we they're not as they're, your followers have more an investment in what you're in what you're teasing and launching because it's like they know that you have that that brain and it's going to be kind of more thought through all the way through yeah exactly and I've been like showing them the process and I'll be releasing footage showing like the behind the scenes of the shoot like I've done everything from like production to copywriting to design like I've really I even I'm relaunching my podcast logo I designed that like I've just done literally everything I edit my own episodes I edit the audio like I'm very hands-on with everything mm -hmm. um but you know some might call me crazy but I'm learning no, how to I think it's a you, little more <laughs> totally but and, well that thing <laughs> I was, that was actually I was going to ask you about a specific episode of your podcast from this summer when you sort of were updating your, your uh, listeners and you were like, listen, like it's, I've been a little sporadic, but like I've been traveling, like a lot's going on, but you sort of said you teased this, this launch and also that you were going to rebrand the podcast along with this launch mm -hmm. and all of that. And it, you kind of alluded to it being difficult to, to juggle all the different things that you kind of have to, when you're an influencer, you have to have your hand in a lot of different buckets. It, like the revenue has to be coming from different places and you're not just doing one thing all the time. So when you're launching something big like this, does like, how do you make room for that? Are you, you're, are you just somebody who just like, all right, I'm going to find the room and it's going to work. Like, how do you balance yeah. all the different things that you kind of have to juggle just uh, kind of by nature of your, of your profession? It's a lot because I would say that this launch has taken up like maybe 75% of my time mm. when it comes to business. Um, 
And then like, you know, I was away with some other influencers this weekend on a trip with my management and you hear other people, how they're making money. Someone's like, well, I made a ton of money from affiliate links. And then someone's like, well, I'm growing on YouTube shorts because I'm doing this. And then someone else is like, well, I'm on Snapchat. Mm. And I'm like, how could I be everywhere at once while still giving everything a hundred percent? And it's really hard. And like, that's where you get hard on yourself. Just like in any business that you're in, you're like, I could be doing this. I could be doing that. I think um, this year I took on an assistant and that's been really helpful because she's really been helping me run point on like a lot of the logistics and I'm more of like the creative bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And I've really learned finally for the first time in my life to outsource, like even for the production photo shoot, I did literally everything. Like I made a 150 page deck. I ordered all the props. I did everything. But then day of, I was like, I just want to be the model and I want people to run it. And I like debriefed everyone. And then day of it went off seamlessly because I had a team of like seven people Amazing. there. Amazing. So like I'm learning like, okay, even if you still want creative direction, like you need to hire people to execute for right. you. Right. You have to vocalize your vision and make sure it's not just living in your own head basically. Yes. But then, <laughs> right. Which is hard when you're, totally. you're, sometimes you could be a great idea person, but that doesn't mean you're a great manager. Hmm. It's kind of tough. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's why a lot of big companies are successful. And then they hire CEOs because you could be the most creative, like genius, amazing person in the world, but it doesn't mean you can manage a team of 50. Totally. Exactly. Totally. So yeah, it's yeah. just, I'm just learning. I don't know. I'm just long for the ride. I'm like, this yeah. And you also just said, you have to tell yourself that you, it's impossible to do like all of it. Like you have to yeah. kind of pick the ones that really work for you. And like, you know, if it's like affiliate links don't work for you, but like YouTube does really well. It's like, you, you just have to follow to what, what's out. working. Yeah, totally. And, and, and like you said at the beginning of this interview, it's like, you have the, you have the gene that like, you want to try, th try those things out. You want to, mm -hmm. you want to test them out. And if they, I'm guessing if they don't work, then like, you don't have to do it, but like, you're at least going to give it a shot. That's my issue. I'm like, wait, but I want to <laughs> Snapchat. Wait, but I want to do this. Yeah. I want to, I'm like, wait, I can't be everywhere at once, but mm -hmm. yeah. I try. Totally. <laughs> Um, when doing research for this, and, and if you don't want to talk about this, it's totally fine, but I, yeah. I, I, I didn't, so your, did your podcast used to be a barstool podcast? Yes. So it okay. was, so okay. I, in true publicist fashion, yeah. I pitched Dave Portnoy during COVID directly, the concept of my podcast. So my podcast was originally called the publicity podcast and mm -hmm. it was strictly pop culture over COVID. I really, really, really felt like just talking about pop culture seemed so stupid when like so much was going on and like people were dying and there was all these movements happening right. and I was like changing as a person. And I was like, you know what? I want to talk more about body image and pop culture and a mix of things. I don't want to just talk about this one pop culture thing. I want to talk about mental health and right. other things. So I wanted to rebrand from the publicity podcast to tea with publicity. And I, cold call, just like pitched Dave Portnoy. I DM'd him. I know how to pitch. I knew I would get his attention. I like changed my profile picture, made sure it looked a certain way. I knew that he would only see the first few words of my DM. So I made sure that those words were eye catching. What were those words? Um, instead of wasting space with being like, hi, hope you're well. I said, hear me out period. And then that, I was just, that, 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 been, that would intrigue anybody. Yeah, exactly. And then I called out a flaw in his business model. And I said, you're not appealing to people like me. Like at the time, Caller Daddy was huge. And I was like, you're only really appealing to like skinny blonde girls that are getting flown around on private planes. And like, that's just not real, like realistic. Like not mm -hmm. everyone's out here dating athletes. Like some of us are like putting on weight and getting ghosted and like have anxiety and Granted, since Alex Cooper's definitely rebranded, but at the time, oh, totally. But like, at the, you yeah, absolutely have a point. Yeah, you absolutely have yeah. a point about what you were the 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 blank space they had. You know. Yeah. Um. So then I basically was like, let's um, let's chat, like blah blah blah. And he messaged me back twenty minutes later and was like, let's talk. Hmm. I picked his interest. I went in for the interview. I met with him and the CEO. We negotiated for like a month and a half, two months. I got a contract. I went in there. Um, I was there. I had a two-year contract. I was there a year and a half. They wound uh -huh. up letting me go. Um, and was that, were, what was your reaction to that? 
I was blindsided because there was never any warning or any communication or any right. contact, no direction. There was nothing. I don't, I've never really, I don't really talk about it too much, but it's pretty public. Um, mm-hmm. It is what it isn't. Like basically they let go of a ton of people at once. And I was in that round of layoffs, but I also at that time knew it wasn't working, but I couldn't leave because I was in a contract. So it actually right. kind of worked that they let me go because otherwise I was stuck for another six months. And I knew I was leaving so much money on the table because I couldn't have outside partnerships. And so ultimately so I they wanted- they controlled all of that aspect as well. Yeah, they controlled all of it, but I was doing all of the work. So like yeah. I wanted to do a live show. I put it together. I sold it out. I was doing everything, but I wasn't getting the ad money. So I was like, I, I wanted to leave, but I couldn't. And it was actually a blessing in disguise the way that they did, like the timing in which they let me go. Um, and I don't really like have bad blood. I honestly think they didn't know what to do with me. And right. I think partially part of it was my fault in a sense, because I didn't want to like compromise my integrity for views and likes. And had I talked about really salacious or like, polarizing things I could have gotten those views but I didn't want to put my like own integrity in that position so I didn't mm. and because of that I grew much slower than a lot of the podcasts on that network which, but which maybe so right happy. well it's, well, it's like now do. now you own your show right so it's yeah. like now you like you said it's a blessing in disguise and like everything happens for a reason you know and now it's like you're on you and now you can stick to what you actually want to be talking about there And I knew I was only going to be there those two years. For me, Mm. it was very much like a stepping stone and exposure thing. I'm happy I did it. I, a lot of my audience did find me through them, which was great. And my goal there was to only appeal to women, which I'm so happy that I successfully did because I look at some of the other women on their network and their comments are just flooded with men berating them. Mm. And I didn't want that, which is why I was really strategic about not making such a big splash Cause I was like, I don't want these people following me. Right. I just want like my niche little corner of the internet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's like I sort got- of once, once you cross that threshold, it's sort of like, you can't really go back. There's right. no going back. So I'm really pleased. Like the slow and steadiness of it. Actually, I'm really happy. I like listened to my gut Good. and it all, it all worked out. And now I yeah. have the show. I'm able to do outside sponsors. I'm able to launch this business without giving it to them, you know, all of these things. So, um, yeah, it was interesting time. I think everything yeah. happens for a reason. Totally. And it's like, if you think back to that time in just in general, it's like things were every single company and media company was just like com- all these different moving pieces and like, you know, things happen. But again, now you oh. now you own your show and you're about to launch a product that you can use your sh- own show to publicize it. So it's like, it all, it's all going to feed itself, you know? And it's, it all happens. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, well, this has been so much fun. I think we're, this is, that's probably all the time we have, but what, where, where can people get tea with publicity? What would, do do one last plug before we uh, sign off. Yes. So everyone can follow my main account at Publicity, P-U-B-L-Y-S-S-I-T-Y. And I link out everything from there. The website is teawithpublicity.com. Also, that's the name of my podcast, as well as the Instagram for the brand and the podcast. So everything's kind of funneled through Publicity. And um, yeah, try my tea. Let's sip it while we spill it. Listen yes. to the podcast. Yeah. Trademark. We'll be- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. All right. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in to We Should Talk. I hope you enjoyed the interview. You can find out more about In The Know at inthenow.com. You can follow me, Gibson John, at Gibsonoma on Twitter and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our interviews, past and future, by searching We Should Talk wherever you get your podcasts. Hope to see you next time.